Hello, I'm Michael Schneider, the Head of Investor Relations and Sustainability at Brain Biotech AG in Swingenberg, just uh, closely out of Frankfurt, uh, between Frankfurt and Heidelberg. Um, let me quickly remind you what we are. Uh, we are an industrial biotech specialist. Uh, we had around 38 million revenues last year, about 320 employees, and actually quite an established company listed since 2016 and almost 30 years on the market. I have to be very proud to say today with our six months result that we actually have achieved major growth. So the 38 million you see there for last year uh, will become rather 15 million into this year uh, so that we actually will make a big step forward. So what are we? Well, we are white biotech specialists, i.e. we focus on industrial biotech. And here we basically have three platforms, enzyme, microorganisms and bioactive compounds. And we try to cover the whole value chain from the lab basically to the production. This is the group in itself, and just like to remind you very quickly that we have two very distinctive parts. On the right-hand side, the bioindustrial business, which is our products business. Here we really sell enzymes to the market, and enzymes are nature's catalysts, so they do help basically to foster a lot of processes. And you think, for example, about biological production, and that's a big part of the ESG uh, and strain on the world, but essentially enzymes are one of the enablers, and that's what we do most in our products business. Secondly, on the left-hand side, the bioscience business. Here we do really science with our customers. So tailor-made solutions is how we call that, or custom research, where we develop biotech solutions for our customers. And we service here our incubator business, which basically is our own pipeline of breakthrough products. And I'm going to touch a couple on these later on. So what are the highlights of the quarter? Again, it's a six-month update here. But first of all, on bioscience, we have been developing clearly at the upper end of our own forecast, so very dynamic growth here. Secondly, the business has not only been driven by customer demand, but also by our proprietary genome engineering tool, the CRISPR-Cas technology called on BEC and BMC, brain-engineered CAS and brain metagenome CAS. And what we call it the CRISPR for you business, where we in our tailor-made solutions business, CRISPR basically on behalf of our customers. On the bioindustrial side, we saw very, very strong sales at our uh, unit biocatalyst in Wales, where we do our large-scale oil fermentation. And here I'm happy to say that the 10 cube fermenter, which we have put in place last year, and which has increased our capacity by 20 times, actually is already fully booked. And we are right now commissioning a second 10 cube fermenter, which is to become close to come on stream during the summer months and should be fully operational from next year onwards, again, doubling our capacity here at biocatalysts. We could have grown even more dynamically in bioindustrial if we wouldn't have had selected supply chain issues, particularly on packaging, but also on primary supply uh, for the products we manufacture here, but we have not been able to fulfill all customer demands, despite that being growing very strongly. Our very important incubator, we had the announcement that we have also now a genome engineering tool active in mammalian cell lines, a major breakthrough here, particularly going to pharmaceutical development, on the urban mining program, one of the programs had a red traffic light. We have now a new partner, which unfortunately cannot disclose by name, but who will help us to advance the program further on. And the two pharma programs in the incubator are race for wound cleaning and PHA-121 for hereditary aneurysma are both progressing as planned. And last but not least, a very important milestone. We have now finally published our inaugural ESG report, the sustainability report here. Clearly, that strategy is embedded into the overall business strategy of Brain, and I'm happy to share some insights from the report with you. What do we do on ESG? We have based our ESG report essentially on what we call ESG+. Plus. So not only the ESG targets, but also economic performance and what we call the Brain Inc. products. So essentially, the incubator products which have a major influence on the SDGs. Why economics? Well, first of all, we're still loss-making. We're very close to profitability nowadays, but of course we want to become profitable because a profitable business and profitable top-line growth builds the base also for our impact and our, for our ESG for efforts. Brain impact is very important for us because that's the major value driver of the growth. So bring these breakthrough products to the market, which also tackle five of the SDGs directly. And then, of course, we will try to also reduce our own environmental footprint from our production and services. Here, we focus our e-targets on. On the social performance, we're particularly looking here at occupational health and safety, employee training, but also, for example, to promote more women to management positions. 
And last but not least, governance is key for us, of course, not to have any faults within our products, within our services, or on general corporate governance for the group. These are our ESG targets. So as I said, E, S, G, and plus, the brain impact. On the environmental targets, we will clearly focus right now to bring down our greenhouse gas emissions footprint from our own production and services. And we are looking at a reduction of 30% until 2032 and a complete reduction to net zero by 2050. On the social targets, we're looking essentially a higher share of women in management positions. We have today 25%. And we're targeting about 30% for 2032. And particularly important for producing enterprise, as we are in our enzymes business, we're looking at a low frequency rate of injuries and trying to bring down the LTIFR to one, uh, to one million hours work to be low free. On the response in business operations, the governance, we're looking at zero net fines from compliant operational breaches. And we're also looking to significantly increase the share of our license and royalty income which is basically our steady business and making our business model overall more sound and, and, and crisis proof. And last but not least, on the brain impact, we're looking to launch our incubator programs here successfully to the market by 2032. And of course, also to refresh the incubator moving forward as our pipeline of growth projects. But you see in the green asterisk here, these are all targets which will basically incorporate into the management compensation going forward. So we're looking to present to the AGM uh, next year, essentially a new executive management compensation scheme, which will also incorporate non-financial targets. And the non-financial targets are the ESG targets, which I've presented to you here. What is also very important for Brain is that ESG is not a threat for us. ESG is an opportunity. So clearly from being a biotech, biotech company, from being biologizing essentially industrial production, we see many business opportunity from the ESG drives and the general targets to net zero from the EU. Starting basically from discovery of new compounds or enabling biological manufacturing. So what you might know as cell factories, for example, with our own producer strains and our bioprocess development or biological production and large scale fermentation, for example, the daughter company Biocatalyst in Wales, to the finished products like the enzyme products that we provide to the market, who as I said before, are nature's catalysts. But it's also very important to understand what you see in the gray area on the bottom of the chart is that all of these technologies get enabled by our back and BMC technology, so or by our own genome engineering tool. So that back BMC really has a very important function across the entire value chain, also with our ESG value chain. This is our incubator. Um, here, I'd just like to touch on the highlights here. First of all, gold from Vastream. We moved that product from red, i.e. having non-partner, uh, to partially yellow and green, i.e. we have a partner. We are right now developing the next commercial stage, but it's not fully commercial yet as a model. That partner is a very important one because it helps us to share risk on the projects and it brings expertise to the table, uh, which we didn't have before. Secondly, on our ORAs, the wound debridement agent was developed with Solar Spure. The first patients were tested and overall the treatment was well tolerated, which is the first important milestone in the phase two trials. Thirdly, on the pharma compound PHA121 for hereditary angioedema, here, basically, our partner Favaris has reported that everything is developing to plan. And last but not least, very importantly, on the brain injury at CAS, we were able to, to announce that that is now active also in mammalian cell lines. I'm going to touch a bit more in detail now on the urban mining product. We moved the traffic light basically away from red to green yellow. Here we have signed a partner who, unfortunately, for competitive reason, doesn't want to be disclosed, but that partner has a very strong knowledge of precious metal processing and handling. This partner has the same vision as we do in terms of bio goals. So for example, think about jewelry, think about watches. Here, consumers want to have traceable gold and i.e. the bio gold vision is something which might carry a premium at the market. We are clearly looking at the myth risk mitigating partner in the process. And at the next step, we will basically upscale our demonstration plans here in Swedenberg and then we'll bring that plan to the partner side of really to try to test it in the market from the buying of material to the processing of material until the final board in our hands and see if that process works really on a larger scale. 
if it proves to be successful, and we would expect that to happen within, let's say, a year's time frame, uh, then essentially we're looking at large scale production. And for that, we would also be thinking of founding a new co, which then also would be um, partially open for new partners. On the genome engineering, because it's so important for us, let me spend another minute on that. Mammalian cell lines means also human cell lines. And human cell lines are very, very important, um, particularly um, in the areas of pharmacology and therapeutics. And here, basically, with the activity of our system in these cell lines, we just broaden the addressable market significantly. And you can imagine that particularly in the pharma market, here the margins are quite high, so that also the license fees you can generate with such deals uh, can be quite high and very meaningful for us. On top of that, we have announced uh, that we not only have developed now the system for mammalia cell lines, but we are also looking now to basically develop a consumer business ourselves by not only essentially providing the enzymes, so the cutting enzyme system to the customers, but also a so-called RNT system, which is basically the system how you can deliver the cutting enzymes into the cells, making it way more easier for our customers to use the system and therefore also broadens the number of applications we could think about. As you know, we are looking to found a new co on the um, um, general engineering platform. We are still on that path and we feel so we can do it in the business year of 2022. Um, as always, founding a new company also has a lot of implications, particularly also on tax. So there's a certain delay in the process, but we want to do it right. So we'd rather take an extra step here to have the right setup also from a tax perspective. But we are still quite confident that we can actually increase, uh, actually get a true new core within this business here. And last but not least, since we announced going into mammalian cell lines and having the system active there, uh, the number of partner requests uh, we have gotten and received actually increased significantly, so that we're also quite confident that we will be able to announce new partners going forward for the program. Let me jump into the financial highlights and just rename a couple of very important ones. First of all, we had excellent growth. So revenues were growing almost 30% in the first six months. They're of about 19.6% organic, the remainder coming from the acquisition of RareTech. Secondly, that has been earmarked the third consecutive quarter of strong growth. So starting the fourth quarter of last year, very strong 3M, now very strong 6M. Both divisions have been contributing very successfully. So bioscience growing 12% uh, organically in the second quarter and bioindustrial growing 23.2% in the second quarter on organic terms. Also very important, we showed good operating leverage, positive operating leverage. So EBITDA improved significantly, focusing here on the adjusted line, from minus 2 million to plus 220,000. So quite a huge step for us in the direction of profitability. And last but not least, very importantly, looking at the operating cash flow, here we improved significantly from minus 4 million to minus 1 million. And that minus 1 million does include 1 million of investments in the first six months for CRISPR-Cas program. So excluding that, we would have been very much uh, in the area of break even also operating cash flow. One more word on total cash. We had 24 million, 34.5 million cash at the end of last year. We are now at 16 million. And that cash has been majorly consumed for investments. So we purchased Breatech, 3.7 million. We had another capital increase at our daughter company, SolarSkill, 1.2 million. And also, we are spending quite heavily on CapEx at the moment at our daughter company, Biocatalysts in Wales, which is a wonderful program to spend on because these new fermenters we add are very profitable for the group. But again, we spent 1.8 million for that. So that in total, 60 million cash, I would say, is quite a strong cash position still. But on top of that, we have 7 million untrawn credit lines facility available. And also, we of course, one reason why you want to find a new co on the crispr cas program is to have additional financing optionalities in the new co. So if you overall would consider our cash situation right now, it's very solid. This is an important chart for me because it shows you, it shows you that after three years of stagnant growth in 18, 19, 19, 20, 20, 21, we're essentially coming back now to strong growth. So the group has been growing very nicely in the six months, and we have every reason to believe that growth is going to continue for the remainder of the year. And we are also quite optimistic for the coming years. So from that point of view, we are back to growth, which is a very important message here for our brain. And which also is a very important step to profitability because top line growth is clearly here one of the major drives. 
Let me quickly jump into the risks. I think uh, the COVID situation is mostly behind us from a business perspective at the moment, but we are still focused by the aftermath, which is mainly supply chain risk and cost inflation. On cost inflation, so far, we have been reasonably successful to pass on product costs to customers. We have been faced by mild wage inflation and expect more to come. But the major holdback so far were supply chain issues where we could simply not get enough packaging, not get enough logistics, and not get enough, essentially, primary product uh, to, to then finish it into the end product here at the end. But even with this supply chain restraints, we showed very good organic growth, and we could have shown even more in our bio-industrial segment with our speed restraints. We expect these to continue in the coming quarters, but nevertheless are quite confident, basically, also for the remainder of this business year. And hence, we have upgraded also now our guidance, including the acquisition of RareTech, and actually um, our guiding now at the upper end of our previous guidance, looking at group sales to be around 50 million. We were looking at 43 to 45 before, with RareTech adding about, adding about 5 million, so actually an upgrade to our guidance. We are now looking at bioscience to grow at the upper end of the forecast, the 15 to 25%, and bioindustrial rather at the lower end. The reasons here are mainly the supply chain risk talked about before, where we just can't get enough supply at the moment. We are looking at slightly positive adjusted EBITDA. The previous guidance was around zero. And we're still looking to spend around two and a half to three million euros for the full year, basically on our CRISPR program, and an unchanged group capex of around seven to eight million for the full year. Also, our midterm targets remain in place fully unchanged, which basically is doubling our product revenues and targeting a midpoint EBITDA of 15%. And of course, with a strong growth coming back now to brain on organic terms, but also the acquisitions that we have executed in the last years, that now looks way more achievable also for the outside than it might have been a couple months ago. The next communication will be August the 29th with our nine-month figures and the beginning of next year with our full-year figures. And as said, stay posted. We are on a very interesting journey. We're very confident to execute on this journey. And with growth being back to Brain is really good news, not only for us here at Brain, but also for our shareholders. Thank you very much. Since you watched this company video until the end, I'm guessing you liked the video. That's probably because we work very hard to create the most engaging and value-added content possible for you. If you're a stock-listed company or corporation and want to find out how we at c a can make a company video with and about you, please email us at community at c